What I want to impress upon you is that all the color you see around you, whether synthesized in a lab or dug up out of the ground, is chemically derived. As a painter, I've devoted much of my life to this sort of color. I took the long route and learned my craft much as painters did in 15th century Flanders, first learning how to make my own paints and learning how to achieve a complexity of color possible only when light travels through thin layers. Painters are an obsessive bunch. We tend to focus on exactly what eludes us. And along these lines, I became fixated on a particular blue color found in morpho butterfly wings. I really wanted to incorporate this structural color into my art. So I went on to study these wings with Judy Holdner, a mathematician at Kenyon College. And I learned that the color of these wings arises not from their chemical composition, but from minute geometric structures, roughly the scale of wavelengths of visible light. This is called structural color. I wanted to incorporate this color into my work, but I wasn't sure how, until I began learning about nanotechnology. Now, oddly, I find myself working alongside some of the finest scientists in the world. As the artist in residence in the Ali Visados lab and a visual studies graduate student at UC Berkeley, I create macro scale art out of nanoparticles. I create an array of chemically identical substances with different colors by changing the shape, size, and packing structure of nanoparticles. I create my work with one element, silver. What charmed me about silver is exactly the reason photographers have used silver since the 19th century, its sensitivity to light. The black you see here are silver gelatin emulsions. The blue and yellow are silver nanoparticles. We perceive yellow when light passes through the particles and blue when it reflects from them. So taking the sensitivity to light a step further, at the nanoscale, we can actually use light to create particles. Exposed to light, silver spheres change shape into polygons. Our eyes detect this change as a color change. This turquoise color you see is characteristic of silver nanoprisms, the flat triangular shapes from the previous slide. Here we see the same piece from slightly different perspectives. Like the butterfly wings, the work I create in the lab looks different from different angles. So I really like juxtaposing the colorful nanoscale silver with the black and silver forms, gray forms to which we're more accustomed. To do this, I incorporate techniques developed by medieval craftsmen, Victorian mirror makers, 19th century photographers, and contemporary chemists. The dark areas you see here are my attempts to mirror the inner surfaces of glass tubing using silver nitrate, ammonia, and of all things, sugar. I just have begun to weave all these strands together, and my work is very much in its nascent stages. But in it, I see the spark of something that engages light, motion, and color in new ways. Now, it seems odd that an artist would spend her days in a laboratory amidst chemists and physicists, but it's far from it. We forget that the intersection of art and science is, in fact, a very old practice, traditional even. Renaissance painters were well-versed in the chemistry and optics of their time. In fact, painters, lens makers, and mirror makers in 15th century Bruges even belonged to the same guild. Fittingly, the paintings produced in this time have an optical sophistication that continues to astound us today. Living as we do, in the midst of a revolution in optics and nanotechnology, artists have a unique role to play in this transformation. And, as we rise to the occasion, the boundaries that define the domain of the artist will, in turn, be redrawn. Thank you. <laughs>